I came up with a great idea for blog owners. We will quickly create videos using your blog posts. This way, you will both increase the visit duration of your blog posts and create an additional source of income. If you're ready, without further ado, let's quickly select our blog post and start creating our video. By the way, if you don't have a blog, that's not a problem either. You can take articles that you think might interest people and use them on your YouTube channel. The AI tool doesn't use the articles here as they are, but transforms them and produces suitable photos or videos for them. There is no situation that requires you to think of it as stealing the article. After making this reminder, let's start making our video for both blog owners and those looking for YouTube ideas. At this stage, I will select a blog post for a YouTube channel I run in German and create a video related to it. However, while trying this with me, you can use your own blog's link or start from scratch with the help of another website or news site. I will choose this article. It talks about six things people use for fun. This is a historical topic. For my Almanac channel, I prefer to choose topics that people can be interested in at any time, even 10 years later, and watch out of curiosity. If you are thinking of opening a YouTube channel to earn money and don't intend to make cat videos, I recommend progressing with such topics. Now, all I need to do here is copy the link of the article. Then, we will switch to InVideo and start creating the video. InVideo is one of the most popular AI video creation tools recently. It offers various methods to create videos. You can create videos from a link or from a title. You can create videos on completely different topics for many different channels, such as YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, depending entirely on your creativity. You can produce with ready stocks or with the AI-generated visuals and videos it creates. Of course, there are different packages. We will create the video with our blog link using the free credits in video gives us. Later, I will show some tips while editing the video. So let's proceed step by step. To start creating a video from a link, I click on Link to Video in the menu. Then, I click on the Convert Now button, but since I'm not logged in right now, it will force me to log in. Signing up is easy. You can quickly register with Gmail. In the window that opens, you can paste your link, write the prompt you want, and say, Create a German video similar to the blog post in this link, and have it produce the video. Or, you can click on the Workflow button below and open a screen that will guide us through the options here. There is a Blog to Video section. I will briefly show this as well, but in this video, we will use Link to Video. When you click on Blog to Video, what it expects from you here is to copy and paste the blog post here, or paste its link. So, you can comfortably use this as well. On the other hand, you are asked to paste the link directly here. So, there is no option to paste the blog post here. Let's proceed from here. I paste the link of our video here. Then, you need to make the right selection here. I will create a video for YouTube, so I select that. But the channels you will publish the video on may be different. In the media selection, since I'm creating a video with a free account, the only area I can choose is this. It doesn't allow me to proceed with the others right now. But if you don't want to deal with creating visuals or videos in a more professional way, with other tools, there is a 22% discount on annual plans. You can choose the one that suits you from those plans and purchase it. I will leave the links you need in the description. Here, you can make music selections, language selections. Now, I will apply something I haven't tried before. Actually, the link I gave here is an English blog post link. I want to make a German video. We will see the result together. When I say there should be background music, since this will be a documentary flow, I wrote documentary, and it will choose a suitable sound. Here, I can make selections about how the text will appear, but I will skip this part, because we will edit the video in CapCut later. I can choose my voice, male or female. It offered the option, I say male. Then, I choose the voice tone. So, since this will already be a German voiceover, I will check if there is a German option among the choices. Actually, this is my criterion. You can also make selections according to the language you will produce in or the accent you want, American-British, 
or for a kids' channel, you can choose Kids. Since there is no option suitable for German, I will proceed by selecting the default voice option. I have completed my selections regarding the voiceover artist. I skipped the subtitle part, because I will do it in CapCut. In the watermark section, you can write the name of your channel or a message you want to give, like subscribe, for the brand to appear there. I will leave this blank. In the music options, you can ask it to use the library on YouTube or use a music it chooses. But since we will upload this to YouTube, there might be a licensing issue. I will use the YouTube library option here. It asks for my stock preferences. Actually, the only option here is iStock. But here, should I use it or not? How much should I use it? There are different alternatives. I won't make a selection here either. I say, proceed. I click the continue button. It brought my selections to the screen here. It will make a video in German with a documentary style background music and a male voiceover artist. I immediately click the generate button and the video starts going to this link and doing its analysis. It summarizes the text and then will ask me some basic questions about how long it should make the video. The options opened. Here, there are options like four minutes, 10 minutes, two minutes. In terms of duration, I think four minutes is ideal to not bore people too much. Here, it asks about the audience. Accordingly, it will adjust its language a bit. I choose the second option. I will proceed with this. Even though we selected it at the very beginning, it asks again here about the platform. After selecting the YouTube option, I click the continue button and wait for it to create the video. The video is ready. Now, I will show you a very short part of it. Die Menge versammelt sich nicht um Wärme, sondern um ein Schauspiel, das so grausam wie rätselhaft ist. Katzenverbrennung Hunderte von Katzen, oft ahnungslosen Bürgern gestohlen, wurden in Weidenkörbe gestopft und hoch über die lodernden Flammen gehieft. Die Wende zum 20. Jahrhundert brachte einen beunruhigenden Trend mit sich, menschliche Zoos. Diese Ausstellungen, die oft in Großstädten in ganz Europa und Amerika stattfanden, zeigten indigene Völker aus kolonisierten Nationen. I showed you short clips from the video. Since it's in German, I don't know. If there are any German speakers among you, they understood more clearly. But what it tells in the video matches the visuals and videos it puts. In other languages, especially English, Spanish, German, French, Russian, if you are opening YouTube channels, it is also important to understand what you are doing. Because after a while, comments will come to those videos, and to increase the interaction there, you need to know what you are talking about and give correct answers to the comments. I apologize to everyone in advance for this boring part. Let's quickly move on to editing our video. The visuals of this video are not suitable for my channel. Since I didn't buy a package in InVideo, it didn't create the visuals in the style I wanted. Here, I will edit the video one by one. I will create visuals suitable for the flow of the video. For this, I will go to ChatGPT. By the way, if you don't want to deal with writing prompts, you can also do this. While in InVideo, when you click on the visual or video you want to change, here, as you will see from the titles of the visuals, you can directly understand which search terms the visual will be designed for and create suitable visuals accordingly. Now, we will go to ChatGPT and ask it to create English prompts for us to create visuals through the scripts here. It sounds a bit complicated, but why are we doing this? Why aren't we using the blog post? Because it created a completely different video from the blog. Here, for example, there were entertainments related to cats in old times, but there is no such information in our blog post. It actually created an original video suitable for that reader and viewer audience taking help from the idea of that blog post. If you want to buy and use in video, keep this in mind. You can be at ease regarding originality. That's why we don't go to the point of creating prompts and take help from the blog. Because here, we have a completely different video. The topics are completely independent of the blog. In the next video, let's paste the blog post completely and see if it creates a video that exactly matches that blog. This way, we will have compared both link to video and blog to video. We will have looked at the features of both. I switched to the script section. At this point, I will edit the video in CapCut, but for those who want to edit here, 
I will also show this very briefly. I will skip the first parts of this video a bit because these are the areas where the viewer breaks away and you lose the viewer. You need to get to the point as soon as possible. You need to keep these parts a bit short. Now I take the text related to the visual and paste it into ChatGPT. Then I say, write me an English image prompt related to the text I gave. This way, it creates a long and detailed prompt for me. I copy this prompt and switch to the Leonardo tool where we will create the visual. For those who haven't heard of Leonardo AI before, I will give a brief summary. On this platform, you can find many different AI applications together, such as creating all kinds of visuals, videos, characters. Especially, I use this platform to design visuals for free. Leonardo defines 150 credits every day. Of course, there may be some restrictions while using these credits, or measures may be taken later. But for now, you can use these credits comfortably. I want to briefly talk about Leonardo's interface. By the way, you can quickly log in with your mail, and it doesn't ask for any extra information. First, let's look at the left menu. Here, you select the model suitable for the visual you will design. I will use the cinematic model for my YouTube channel. However, there are also different options like kids' channels or cartoons. Depending on the model you choose, your credit spending may change. For example, the cinematic model spends 14 credits, while if you choose a different model, this amount can increase to 24 or 39 credits. Therefore, you need to use your credits carefully. After selecting the model, there are different looks in the style section below. For example, there are styles suitable for different fields, like food, movies, fashion. I will continue in cinematic style. Here, you can choose the contrast. If you want more eye-catching visuals, choosing high contrast will be more logical. Also, you need to choose the size suitable for the platform you will broadcast on. I use the 16 by 9 size and medium option. However, if you want higher resolution, you may be directed to the premium package. In Leonardo's free version, you can use 150 credits daily under certain conditions. If you become a member, you can start with a low package, like $10. These packages can go up to $24 or $48, depending on your different needs. Especially if you are going to produce videos, you may need more credits. After making our selections, when I paste the prompt and press the Generate button, it will create four different visuals related to the same prompt for me. However, if you want to create fewer visuals, this option is currently closed and you need to upgrade your package. Also, there are negative prompt fields and you can determine them yourself. Let's copy the prompt created by ChatGPT and switch to Leonardo. Here, I will have it produce in classic mode. Then, we will directly upload our visual to NVIDIA and start editing our video. The visuals are uploaded, and here we see views of the streets of Paris. Leonardo, especially in the cinematic side, can sometimes fail while drawing human faces. However, you can get more successful results in anime or different styles. I will quickly download these visuals and start editing my video. On InVideo, while editing the video, to know which visual I need to fix, I copy the prompt I used. After clicking on the visual, I say Uploaded Media from the options below and upload the visual I produced in Leonardo. The visual is uploaded, and by clicking on it, I make the visual change. This way, you can replace all videos or visuals with the visuals you produced. InVideo also informs you about which title and description you should use while uploading your video to YouTube. It lists which hashtags you can use and shows at which minute the topic transitions are. This feature provides great convenience while uploading the video to YouTube. My video is downloaded, and now let's switch to CapCut. I opened CapCut and uploaded my video downloaded from InVideo here. I press the plus button, and my video comes here. The first thing I need to pay attention to is selecting the measure here. I choose the 16 by 9 size. If you are uploading to a different platform, you need to pay attention to this measure. To speed up your work in CapCut, you need to use the Pro version. In the Pro version, many features are offered unlimitedly. However, you can also do some basic operations in the free version. 
For example, separating the sound from the video requires the Pro version. However, the first trick for you is that you can proceed by placing visuals on the video in the free version as well. I right-click on the video and say separate audio from video. Then, I place my visuals on the video. I place these visuals in a way suitable for the flow of the video. For example, the part about cats starts at the 36th second. I place the cat visual to match that part. I click the transitions button on the top left and add transition effects, adding movement to my video. In CapCut, you can also add animations to your visuals. This way, your video will become more dynamic. Also, by using the adjustment area, you can adjust the color quality and make your visuals more eye-catching. To add subtitles to my video, I select the audio and click on the caption option in the left menu. Here, I select the language of the video and press the generate button. Subtitles are automatically created. You can customize the font, color, and style of these subtitles. Also, you can make the texts flow on the screen in a more dynamic way. Finally, I can add effects to my video. CapCut has many different effect options. For example, by adding a film effect, I can make my video more cinematic. Most of these effects are available in the Pro version, but you can also use some basic effects in the free version. After finishing editing my video, I can download and upload it to YouTube. But first, I want to show it to you as well. Die panischen Schreie der Tiere dienten als eine verdrehte Form der Unterhaltung, das Spektakel als Höhepunkt des Mitsommerfestes. Warum solche Grausamkeit? Einige Historiker glauben, es war eine symbolische Geste, die böse Geister abwehren und Glück bringen sollte. Man stelle sich das mal vor, wie im Mittelalter. Schlimmer als der Berliner Bär im Zoo. Von den lodernden Scheiterhaufen von Paris reisen wir zu den großen Höfen Europas des 17. und 18. Jahrhunderts. In this video, I explained step by step how to create a video from a blog link within video, how to create visuals with Leonardo AI, and how to edit your video in CapCut. I leave all the links you need in the description. If you have watched the video up to here, don't forget to like, comment, and share the different tools you use in the comments 